And this brings us to a question from Kyle. Why would God put the tree in the garden to start with? Well, this is a good question. It's a fair question. And um, the way I characterize it in the story of reality, and, and it, by the way, there's a, there is a, this is a kind of a judgment call. It, it isn't like we have clear characterizations of this in Scripture. It's all explained. Certain things are explained rather clearly. Other things are just there, and we kind of scratch our heads and we wonder, okay? But um, I think characteristically, the reflections on that issue amount to there is nothing, in a certain sense, inherent about the fruit of that tree itself. But it was inherent, uh, what was in but what what was meaningful was the act towards God regarding a prohibition. Up until that time, there was moral innocence, all right? There wasn't, in a deep sense, moral purity. There wasn't like a, an immutable moral goodness. That would be what God has, and that he, he then, in, in my view at least, in Amy's view, um, he... he uh, delivers to us at the resurrection. So it's it's a communicable attribute. And we be, we become holy by nature at the resurrection. Adam and Eve weren't holy by nature. They were holy by practice. In other words, it was possible for them to sin, and it was possible for them not to sin. All right? As what happened, though, is when they ate from the tree, then they disobeyed God. And um, in the story of reality, what, what I, the way I characterize this is that it was a, it was a, an, an opportunity, a way that they could express fidelity to God. All right? It, it's hard to express fidelity um, and faithfulness to someone uh, when you are not tested in that faithfulness, making a choice in favor of that one as opposed to something else. And uh, I was thinking about this notion the other day, you know, we have friends that that uh, we love, all right? Um, and I'm just, just thinking of spousal relationships, okay? Spousal relationships have lots of liabilities to them, obviously, because you're living together and it just always it brings out the best and worst of us. Um, but, um, but we may have friends that, that love us, but, but that love has never been tested because it never cost them anything in many cases. So for the friend that loves the spouse in question, how many times has that, that friend of theirs, the spouse injured the friend who loves them? Oh, they've never done anything wrong. They've always been great. Well, see, then your love hasn't cost you that much. It isn't, I'm not saying it's not real love, it just hasn't cost you. But the spouse who continues to love, when they've been injured, that love costs something. Okay? That is a greater love. And, uh, and so the, 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 the testing of the love, or the opportunity for testing, is what, in a certain sense, secures the meaningfulness of it. And it may be that something like that was going on in the garden. This is a test of fidelity, of faithfulness to a to a uh, to the king, to the sovereign, and of course they failed the test, and that made a mess of things. <laughs> they got themselves into a heap of trouble, and us as well. But I don't know. That would be my my response. I, I actually do think the tree of life. My suspicion is had some inherent quality that God gave it to give life. But I don't think the tree of the knowledge of good and evil had an inherent quality of being destructive. I think the thing that was destructive was the disobedience, not the nature of the fruit that was eaten. Mm -hmm. And Greg, I I agree with you that um, God often reveals hearts through people's actions. So, um, I think about Hebrews 11, where it talks about, not Hebrews, well, Hebrews 11 also talks about this, but when James talks about our actions revealing the truth about our hearts, so we see uh, uh, 
Abraham and we see that he gave the actions of faith, which was following God when in doing what God told him to do. These actions revealed his trust in God. Mm -hmm. So if they had not eaten from the tree, that would have revealed and and shown to all that they trusted God, that God was worthy of trust, all of these things. That's what they should have done, obviously. Especially, especially in the face of temptation. Mm-hmm. In other words, if they just casually didn't eat of it, that, okay, well, that's good. But if they're tempted and then they have to make a decision, no, God said, no, we're going to obey God. And that was mm-hmm. the circumstance they did face, the temptation. And like you said, Greg, there is some speculation in this. But one thing we have to keep in mind as we're thinking about it is the fact that God knew they would fall. And we know this because he talks about Jesus, uh, his plan to die for us on the cross being before the foundation of the world. So that was not a surprise. So whatever the, the tree was meant to do, it is in light of God's overall plan that he had laid out where he where Jesus would die for us on the cross. 